Well, I'm really proud to announce, um, uh, kind of following up a news release by a little um, nonprofit organization called Defying Muscular Dystrophy. A couple of months ago, they um, appointed me to be the the, um, the chairman of the Scientific Advisory Board. And um, we have been working with these people for just about a year now. And I'm here to tell you, we've been doing great things. Uh, they have uh, some, I don't know, close to uh, 100 people uh, that are um, actually in the program with much as we, uh, that we're doing. Uh, they have almost 4,000 people kind of uh, who have much history families. In other words, they have somebody in their family with much history, 4,000 of them uh, on their uh, organization now who are beginning to look at this seriously and say, okay, um, what are we going to do here? And we actually have a program that was designed based on 35 years of work dealing with cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, and so on. Now, you may recall I was terminated from Yerkes Primate Center. I was fired from Yerkes Primate Center at Emory University in 1978 because I discovered the first non-human case of cystic fibrosis in a, in a rhesus monkey. Everybody agreed to it. All the experts agreed to it. And then when they said, okay, Wallach, uh, track it down and, and find out where all the other monkeys are, well, I actually did biopsies, uh, pancreas and liver biopsies and five other sort of cage and troop mates, and they all had the same problem. So it was obviously an environmental problem. Did a lot of blood tests and found out that these um, cystic fibrosis monkeys are caused by a selenium deficiency. Uh, you look it up in the animal industry, and, of course, you get uh, pancreatic lesions and liver lesions identical to cystic fibrosis in any animal, whether it's a chicken or a pig or a horse or a, a snake or whatever, when they get a selenium deficiency. And um, I started seeing some much just kids at the same time. Uh, to kind of jump forward here, and there's been a lot of stuff going on in the last 35 years, obviously, but coming forward to a year, uh, actually three years ago, at that point we'd already been working for two years with dozens and dozens, maybe even hundreds, of uh, Amish kids with muscular dystrophy and cystic fibrosis and been able to reverse it, reverse the um, genetic marker, which is a positive sweat test for cystic fibrosis. Actually, there's 18 other diseases that have a positive sweat test, and um, I actually had gone to China and done 1,700 autopsies on kids under the age of 10 that died of a selenium deficiency, cardiomyopathy, heart disease in China called Kishan disease. It's um, primarily in Kishan province where 13 out of 1,000 would die every year from Kishan disease under the age of 10. And I went over there and did the autopsies because if I was correct, Kishan disease being a known selenium deficiency, there would have to be some of those kids that had cystic fibrosis and, of course, he said, well, no, Wallach, that can't be because there, this is a genetic disease of white Eastern Europeans. Make a long story short, 35%, 595 of these 1,700 kids had lesions of cystic fibrosis of the uh, pancreas and liver and lungs. And, oh, 100% of them had lesions of muscular dystrophy. What a concept. And so began treating both cystic fibrosis and muscular dystrophy kids. About five years ago, uh, lined up with Marvin Ropp, uh, actually a returning Navy SEAL who'd been an Amish kid, went to the Navy, became a Navy SEAL, uh, and he was really disturbed that the medical system was using the Amish community as an ATM machine, uh, to make it short, and uh, so we began to treat these kids nutritionally. Uh, gave Jerry Lewis the data on over 100 kids. Uh, he passed it on to the uh, to the Muscular Foundation. They refused to even look at it, and he insisted because he said, hey, I've helped you raise a billion dollars. I insist you look. And because he insisted, the Muscular History Foundation fired Jerry Lewis. The Muscular History Foundation fired Jerry Lewis. That's why he hasn't been on a telethon for the last three years. And so we've been working with him sort of indirectly through his uh, administrative assistant, Violet, to um, get things going here. Well, now we have a telethon coming up in 2014. We don't have a date yet. People are beginning to donate money uh, to this. Uh, we're just very excited about it. We're in the process of identifying and, and lining up um, people who are celebrities, uh, comedians and singers and dancers and all kinds of people who will um, actually be our celebrity uh, fundraisers to help us raise money for this project. This is a reimbursement project. We want to get 1,000 kids, preferably a minimum of 100, hopefully 1,000 uh, under the age of 18 who would do this program uh, exactly as we say. And then uh, if they finish the program, we would uh, then reimburse them uh, for their expenses. And that way, uh, this is what we're raising the money for as a reimbursement program and to get more and more kids, even if they can't afford it, to be on this program. There's no doubt about it. I personally believe 
that we know the cause, prevention, and cure of cystic fibrosis. We know the cause, prevention, and cure of muscular dystrophy. It's just a matter of implementing it now. We know how to prevent it 100%. We know how to identify it, and we know how to reverse it in most cases. Kids uh, might take just three to six weeks to reverse it. When they're like three years old to five years old, they get to be 8, 10, 12 years old. It might take a couple of months when they get to be uh, 15 to 20 years old. It might take them four to six months, uh, maybe a year. Uh, then when they're older than that, it might take a couple of years. But it's just magic. We're just so excited about this. And um, there's no doubt about it, and we're going to have this telethon next year. Uh, we'll have the location soon. We'll have our celebrities lined up soon, and we're already advertising it, and people are already beginning to donate money. We're getting the largest ones are coming from anonymous donor. That's kind of interesting. And um, but think about it. We already know the cause, prevention, and cure of muscular dystrophy. We're going around the medical system like Louis Pasteur did. He went around the medical system because they were blocking him on vaccinations, and we're going to use the Louis Pasteur technique. And what you want to do is look up the website, Defying Muscular Dystrophy. You will be amazed at what we know. We'll be back with more truth, justice, and the young Jivity way on Dead Doctors Don't Lie for these messages. You're listening to Dead Doctors Don't Lie with your host, Dr. Joel Wallach. If you've ever had difficulty getting in to talk to Dr. Wallach, today is your day. As we do have some open lines, call the priority line at 831-685-1080. That's 831-685-1080. Lines open. Okay, Doug, what uh, pearls of wisdom do you have for us? I thought we'd talk a bit about antidepressants today, as I've got a couple of Fox News stories about the antidepressants that are doled out so uh, readily in this country. In fact, according to the CDC, 11% of all Americans over the age of 12 are taking an antidepressant. And they go on wow. to say that these work can work wonders, but they have serious side effects, such as insomnia, nausea, fatigue, memory loss, and I know some of them... It is things like suicidal or homicidal thoughts. And you, you can add to that, Doc, a risk of possibly getting type 2 diabetes. A study that's coming out of the U.K. with the lead researcher, Catherine Bernard, of the University of Southampton, says there uh, that uh, antidepressants may be greater concern of other factors such as higher doses and longer durations of use seem to raise diabetes risk. In fact, they say there is clearly a link between antidepressant medication and type 2 diabetes. And she wrote this in an email. She said so studies can't say whether the drugs are actually the cause. However, one study in about 166,000 people, uh, 2,200 that were later diagnosed with diabetes, found that those people who are on moderate to high doses of antidepressants for over two years were 84% more likely to get type 2 diabetes than if they hadn't used an antidepressant. Wow. Now, there are some options, though, because according to another Fox News story, they say a natural alternative to antidepressants. They say antidepressants, of course, can work wonders, but a University of Baylor uh, study has found that uh, a natural alternative is curcumin, which is actually found in turmeric. They say it's packed with antioxidants, can help reduce inflammation and free radicals in the body, and now it may help ease depression symptoms as well, so there's no real reason to get on these antidepressants because you can be taking curcumin. In fact, the researchers at Baylor studied 60 people in three groups. One group got only curcumin supplements, another received a generic version of Prozac, and the final group got a combination of both curcumin and Prozac, 500 milligrams of curcumin twice a day for six weeks. At the end of the six weeks, the curcumin was almost as effective as the standard of care drug, according to Ajay Gol, a researcher at the Baylor University Medical Center. So there you go. Yeah, well, that's Something why I'm natural. such a nice guy, because I take the Cell Shield RTQ, and of course, um, Q is quercetin, and turmeric is the T, and R is the resveratrol. So that's why I'm such a nice guy, because I am taking the turmeric. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, they actually said that researchers used a very specific form of curcumin that's called BCM95 has been shown to be more absorptive than uh, generic forms of the compound. They said people can experience the benefits of curcumin by eating turmeric, but you would have to eat it several times a day to get the effects. So probably most likely the best option would be the Cell Shield RTQ from your good friends at Longevity. Absolutely. Now, in the old days... 
doctors used to prescribe cigarettes. I actually have a lot of uh, ads in my files uh, from medical journals where this is before Prozac. When you were depressed, medical doctors would actually write prescriptions for cigarettes. And um, when, when everybody was going after the tobacco companies because of lung cancer, nobody sued the doctors who were writing prescriptions for the cigarettes. I found that a kind of interesting, that they didn't go after the doctors, but they went after the, the um, uh, companies, the tobacco companies. And I suppose there was more money in the tobacco companies, but they should have made doctors co-defendants. Yep. Well, thank you, Doug, for bringing that one up. Yep, Cell Shield RTQ. I take five of those twice a day. And I am a happy guy because of it. And I'm a nice guy because of it. Well, stick with us. We'll be back with more Truth, Justice, and the Longevity Way on Dead Doctors Don't Lie after these messages. You're listening to Dead Doctors Don't Lie on the ZBS radio network with your host, Dr. Joel Wallach. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to Pennsylvania. Ed, Kathy, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Good afternoon, well, Kathy, Wallach. you're on the air. Hi, yes, how can I help you? Um, my husband in late May got an insect bite, or some kind of bite, I should say, and uh, treated it as any normal bite. It never went away. About three weeks later, there started uh, blisters developing going up his calf. He got the, leg, uh, got the bite on his lower leg. Blisters started developing, and about four weeks later, he started seeing parasites coming out. Um, we contacted uh, a naturopath in our area, a her herbalist, and she gave us some, in um, oh my, <laughs> different things, um, black walnut, it was peristat, um, uh, different things, tea tree, we've tried, we've tried so many things. I ended up calling uh, Dr. Judy, emailing Dr. Judy with essential oils, and we got recommendations from her, and that was the beginning of September. He finds relief, and then they seem like they, the eggs hatch again, and they come out, and it's mainly in his lower leg and he just can't seem to get rid of them and it's okay well stop there a minute <laughs> yes. stop there a minute with all these parasites coming out did you save any of them in alcohol so they could be looked at under a microscope uh we do have them but not in alcohol what do you have them in um he just has them in a little capsule or in a little um jar a tiny little jar okay have you looked at them under a microscope yes we have and um uh, how many legs do they have are they worms or they have legs uh, no, they look like they're just worms. They almost remind us of maybe a hookworm, but he has no symptoms whatsoever. He's in excellent health. He has never been on medication. He's never had any ailments. And even through this, um, once it hits people he's seeing, well, this naturopath can't believe how healthy he is um, after all this time, especially too. Okay, well, here's what I would do. Here's what I would do. Um, I would call the CDC um, in, in Atlanta, Georgia, and ask them who a parasitologist is. You can send half of what you got to him in a little jar or a capsule or whatever. Okay, my uncle and, called uh, the CDC, and they said we have three tropical parasite doctors here in Pennsylvania. When I called one, she said, I'm not sure if he could actually help you. I don't know if he's ever dealt in that area. So it really made us hesitate, so that's why we're calling you now, trying to figure out yeah. what we should do next. Well, yeah, we, we have to know what we're dealing with, and so then I would, I would get those... Um, the parasites. Now, I wouldn't give them a whole supply, but I would give them, you know, half a dozen of them um, to them in some kind of capsule or a little bottle, and um, uh, say, "Look, if you guys don't know what it is, talk to the, to the tropical medicine doctors in CDC." But uh, they can take pictures of them and send them email, so it's not like they have to, you know, whatever. You might be able to take them pictures of them and send them email to these guys, and so that's what I would do. In the meantime, what I would do is um, go ahead and get on the 90 essential nutrients for your husband. It's one, one healthy start pack for 100 pounds of body weight. Ramp up on uh, you know his immune system. And then topically, uh, on top of those wounds, I would use our colloidal silver. Use the colloidal silver heavily two or three times a day. Keep them wet for five or ten minutes two or three times a day. And then call me when you get an identification. Be back after these messages. You're listening to Dead Doctors Don't Lie on the ZBS radio network. That does open a line. If you'd like to talk to Dr. Wallach today, call us on the priority line, 831 685 1080. That's 831 685 1080. Lines open.
Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to Maryland. Ed, Ralph, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Oh, Ralph, you're on the air. Uh, thanks, Dr. Wallach. How are you doing? Okay, sir, uh, thank you. How can we help you? I'm calling. I've got two questions today. The first one has to do with a new customer who says that he smells the vitamins through the pores in his skin. Um, and the second question um, okay. is what you recommend in lieu of uh, regular colonoscopies. Okay. Um, well, first of all, as somebody who actually can smell the nutrients through their skin, they're actually having an uh, uh, abnormal rate of sweat, and so uh, I would want to know if they had any health challenges. There's about 18 different diseases that cause these kinds of changes in the sweat where they can actually smell things that they're consuming uh, in their sweat. And so um, you can actually look in the book, Rare Earths for Been Cures, uh, look in the back under the, in the index under sweat tests, and it'll give you a list of all those 18 diseases. Um, you know, the classic one, of course, is cystic fibrosis, and um, but there's 18 other diseases that, that give a positive sweat test like that, so that would be one. Uh, what I would do is make sure this individual is taking his calculated dose in split dosage. In other words, let's say he weighs 200 pounds. Don't take two ounces of OsteoX Plus at breakfast. Uh, take one ounce at breakfast, one ounce at dinner. He may even have to take a quarter of an ounce four times a day. And that's what I would do. I would start splitting it up into a half a dose twice a day or a quarter of a dose four times a day, and that will lower uh, the level of the blood at any one time so it's not going to come out uh, in his sweat and his urine. Okay, from a colonoscopic exam, uh, a thing that a person can do, you can go to most pharmacies without a prescription and get what's called an occult blood test. Uh, you, you take some toilet paper that's soiled after you wipe your bottom after you've had a bowel movement, and... Um, you actually put that um, little bit of bowel movement on some uh, gel in this test kit. If it turns colors in two to three minutes, depending on the brand of that test kit, um, that means you have some blood. It's called occult blood, blood you can't see with the naked eye. And then you, the next step, if that, you get a positive, um, you would um, get a high-resolution ultrasound from a radiology lab without a prescription. Uh, they cost a couple hundred bucks compared to like 2500 to $4,000 for a colonoscopic exam, no, no danger of radiation, no danger of being punctured uh, by the um, uh, colonoscopic uh, instrument. Okay, so that's, that's what I always recommend as a uh, occult blood test. Uh, the book, uh, Let's Play Doctor, kind of guides you in that direction and tells you how to utilize the information. But two great questions there. Okay, Doug, do we have time to start another one? No. Nope. Okay, well, there's that magic music. We're headed one of those information moments, but we do have lines open. Give us a call toll free, 1 379 2552. And that's toll free, 1 379 2552. And we also have lines open on the priority line. Give us a call, 831 685 1080. That's 831 685 1080. You're listening to Dead Doctors. Don't lie on the ZBS radio network. and who to trust. MyPatriotSupply.com is owned and operated by patriots just like you. Has the best prices on storable food, non-GMO seeds, water filtration devices, home canning equipment, survival and self-reliance books, and more. MyPatriotSupply.com has old-fashioned values and the absolute best customer service in the industry. Look for the deal of the day. Unique, affordable survival supplies that fit anyone's budget. Get same-day shipping on all orders and free shipping on orders over $49. Call 866-229-0927. 866-229-0927. Or visit MyPatriotSupply.com for emergency preparedness, self-reliance, and food independence. Shop with a name you know and a name you can trust. Before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com. Hello, I'm Steve Shank. Everybody's heard the statement that what you don't know can't hurt you. But truth is, what you don't know is the only thing that can hurt you. For example, you might not know how our country's wars can hurt you. Japanese radiation and the Gulf oil spill are destroying your seafood. People don't understand how America's 50-year worst drought is hurting them. Our natural disaster experience has proven relief organizations can't take care of the victims. And there's the huge question of how the government will feed all the people that it's promised to feed with 
no food. What if we made the whole country into one big neighborhood where we take care of each other by taking care of ourselves? Here's the plan. For every new EPAC 60-day food supply that you order, eFoods Direct will send a 7-day food supply to each of two families in your name, free of charge. Go to eFoodsDirect.com or call 800-876-0871. We're back with Dead Doctors Don't Lie on the ZBS Radio Network. Dr. Joel Wallach here for Young Jiminy and 90 for Life Crusade. If you have lines open, give us a call toll-free, 1-888-379-2552. Again, that's toll-free, 1-888-379-2552. And if you sweat, if you exercise, if you sweat in your labor or your work, if you just sweat, you want to um, get a hold of that book, Energy Crisis. And there is a CD that goes along with it by the same title, Energy Crisis. It goes into the energy effects and how herbs like guarana, uh, coffee, tea, uh, things like uh, our energy drinks, uh, ACT, uh, Pure 3X um, uh, Renew, uh, things like um, uh, the Rebound sports drink with 100 nutrients in it. And then, of course, uh, we have uh, things like um, uh, the Pollen Burst, which was the energy drink of the 1972 and 1976 Olympic teams. It goes into all the formulas and compares them to all the other energy drinks on the market and how they work and which ones are potentially dangerous and so forth, comparing them to the sweetness of sugar and sugar substitutes. People are always interested in sugar substitutes, which ones are natural, which ones are artificial, synthetic, and their percentage of sweetness against table sugar and so on. That's all in this book, Energy Crisis. And, of course, at the very least, get on Rebound. It has 100 nutrients in it. All the other sports drinks have anywhere from 2 to 6. Uh, let's see, 2 to 6 or 100. You take your choice. I'll take Rebound. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. Well, let's head to Maryland. And, Sally, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Oh, well, Sally, you're on the air. Yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Wallach. How are you? Fine, um, thank you. How can we help you? Okay, I'm hoping you can. I have a very enlarged uh, thyroid. It's benign, I'm told. And, however, it is affecting my breathing. And um, every day it seems to be getting worse. And, okay. of course, 30, uh, surgery. Okay, how much do you weigh? Been... Nah, no, we don't need surgery. We don't need surgery. That's a big screaming no. Um, uh, what do you weigh, ma'am? Two hundred and something. I'm well overweight. I have diabetes, sleep apnea, sarcoidosis, <laughs> high blood pressure. You name it. Okay. And you weigh closer to three hundred or two hundred? Uh, like two fifteen. Two fifteen. Okay. Well, um, let's see. Do you have any skin problems? Eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis, or rosacea? Do you have any asthma? Asthma. Asthma. Okay, Shar, are you there? I'm here. Okay. Uh, what would you suggest for Sally? How should she get started diet-wise and supplement-wise? Well, first she needs to get on a complete gluten-free diet. No wheat, barley, rye, or oats because she has a gluten problem. Yep. And then, and? oh, my gosh, she needs, uh, well, if she's got diabetes, I guess the start would be to get on the healthy blood sugar pack. She needs two of them a month. And uh, she needs the Ocean's Gold for the thyroid. Mm-hmm. I'd have her take three twice a day at her weight, yep. Mm-hmm. What about her blood pressure? Oh, she needs the Ultimate Daily for that. Mm-hmm. Three of those twice a day. That's one bottle a month. And then mm-hmm. sarcoidosis is kind of like uh, it's relative to lupus, fibromyalgia. And so I would throw in two of those large bottles of glucogel so she could have 15 a day, five at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then dietarily, in addition to the... Uh, gluten-free diet, which is going to increase absorption. Thyroid glands need all 90 essential nutrients, so we want to make sure she's getting optimal amounts of nutrition to to support her thyroid uh, activity. But also, um, I would have her uh, get rid of certain things in her diet. uh, In in addition to the gluten, I'd have her get rid of cruciferous vegetables. That means no um, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, or kale, because they do interfere with thyroid function. And for your diabetes, make sure you're taking your fasting blood sugar in the morning before you medicate yourself because on this program the Shar and I have given you, you're going to have your blood sugar drop significantly. 
And uh, our goal here is to, within weeks or months certainly, is to have you um, where you weaned off your medication and your next diabetic. So this program will help you lose weight slowly. Uh, you're, you're five, five, did you say? Say it again. How tall are you, Sally? Uh, five, three. Five, three. Okay, well, five, three, I'd like you to weigh 125. So you need to lose 75 to 80 pounds. And you're going to start losing weight on this program. This program will help you lose weight, being gluten-free um, and staying away from fried foods and processed meats and sugar and all that kind of stuff and oils. And so you're going to begin to lose weight. And um, you might even lose a half a pound every couple of days or so or a pound every week. But once you get um, your diabetes under control to where you're not needing medication anymore, uh, we'll put you on the ASAP and we'll speed up the process. But let's start here. We don't want to load you up with too much stuff. And then call us every couple of weeks. Give us your blood pressure, your blood sugar levels, um, anything to do with energy, how you sleep. Make notes uh, every day. And then call us for this information in two weeks' time. You can start the diet now in Maryland. This is going to take you a couple of days to get the product towards you, maybe five to seven working days out there way out east in Maryland. So you can start the diet immediately. Give up the gluten, give up the fried foods, the processed meats, the oils, and give up the cruciferous vegetables and give up the sugar. And, of course, um, when as soon as you get the program, you can start on that, or you can call us and we'll walk you through how to do each one, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, Doug, we have time to start another one. Yeah, let's head to Minnesota. And Donna, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Hi, Donna. You're on the air. Hi, doctor. Thank you for taking my call. Um, my father-in-law yeah, was, diag was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis uh, several years ago, and now they say it's Crohn's. And he's, he's followed um, this diet here from this book, Breaking the Vicious Cycle, for the last four years, and it's worked pretty good for him. But um, in the book it says uh, no grains such as rice or complex sugars or carbs. And so because there was a couple products from Longevity there. One, one I, he looked at the glucogel and it has rice flour, and then I noticed I think the Z radical might have uh, polysaccharides. So I guess I'm just wondering what you think, think on that. Okay. Uh, Char, what, what causes uh, Crohn's disease? Uh, and and it's, it's an advanced uh, form of celiac disease, which is a, is a gluten intolerance. No wheat, barley, exactly. rye, or oats. And not wheat, uh, rice has got nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Bashar is exactly right there, uh, Donna. Uh, basically, um, your father-in-law has a gluten intolerance. Uh, what does he weigh? Oh, he's probably about 110 pounds, 100 pounds. Okay, so he's very small. How tall is he? Yeah. Oh, gosh, I don't know. He's um, maybe... Is he taller than you or shorter than you? Uh, he's probably about my height, 5'5", five, 5'3", five, 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 yeah, Well, that's yeah, 110 pounds is pretty pretty light yeah, for a, uh, an adult man. Yeah, uh, does he have any other issues? Uh, yes, osteoporosis, and he did... Um, his macular de degeneration seems to be in remission, so I was wondering, what products do you recommend for... You know, all three of these wrapped up sure. together. Like, does he have any diabetes or? Um, no, not no, not that I know of. Okay, any skin problems do you know of? No, he he did have eczema when he was a baby, very bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think okay. that's kind of with his new diet. You know, that's somewhat. Yeah, well, that goes along with the gluten intolerance. Okay, so he's he's got to be drop dead gluten free. His uh, spouse, anybody living in the house, dogs, cats, turkeys. Uh, canaries, everything's got to be gluten-free. Nobody in the household can be eating it. It's got to be out of the house. And um, 110 pounds um, for a guy that uh, has macular degeneration. How would you start, Char? Oh, boy. I, I think I would give him the, if he's got arthritis and everything, too, the healthy bone and joint pack. He only needs one, but I would add uh, selenium to that. Yeah, for the macular degeneration. Yeah, and I, I'd get him one healthy bone and joint package, just say, and also get him an extra bottle of the um, uh, Osteo FX so he can have an ounce of breakfast, ounce of dinner, one scoop of the BTT at breakfast and dinner, and uh, then take his glucogel uh, half at breakfast, half at dinner, and um, 
stay away from all the other bad stuff, fried foods, processed meats, and oils. Call us every couple of weeks, Donna. We'll walk you guys through this. We'll be back after these messages. We're back with Dead Doctors Don't Lie on the ZBS Radio Network. Dr. Joel Wallach here for Young Jimmy and 90 for Life Crusade. And, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to Dallas, Texas. And, Cecilia, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Hi. Cecilia. You're on the air. Hi, Dr. Wallach. Thank you so much for taking my call. Yes, ma'am. How can I help you? Um, in 2000, I went through breast cancer. I had surgery, chemo, and because of the chemo, I went right into osteoporosis. I'm always looking for ways to strengthen my immune system and build bone structure. Mm -hmm. um, I know cancer likes fat cells, and it also likes acidic systems. And so I usually check my pH several times a day with those little strips when I use the restroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I'm concerned that the tangy, tangy tangerine swings me over to uh, an acidic system. Um, can you give me some direction there for uh, my pH and my immune system? Uh, Health-wise, I weight. I'm, I'm at a good weight um, working what do you on weigh? building. Uh, I weigh about 126, mm -hmm. and I'm about five three. Okay. Well, we have just a little moment here, but this is probably a good time to talk about the Clemson University study. Uh, Clemson University in, in Clemson, South Carolina. Uh, looked in human cell cultures, uh, in, in, in normal human cell cultures, just standard undiseased cells, uh, using both our ultimate classic, uh, which is a liquid, and also the uh, Beyond Taint Tangerine uh, Nutricrystals. And when it came to breast cancers, both of them, uh, uh, actually I'm going to jump back to the healthy cells first, uh, both the ultimate classic and the uh, Beyond Taint Tangerine uh, made the cells healthier, live longer, and then they doubled the dose, and they were healthier and live longer. And then they gave the um, Ultimate Classic uh, and also uh, the Beyond Tan Tangerine to cell cultures that were um, breast cancer and colon cancer and liver and stomach cancer. In the breast cancer one, both the uh, Ultimate Classic and the uh, Beyond Tan Tangerine uh, killed 32% of the cancer cells from breast cancer. Uh, and so we're very excited about that. So it has an inhibitory effect on the survival of breast cancer cells in cell culture. Uh, we're now working with people, um, you know, through Clemson University for many, many things in whole people, okay? And so we're very excited about how things are going. Um, we're talking about a nutritional program here. And basically... When you test your saliva and your urine with these test strips, what you're doing is you're testing what your body is throwing out um, to keep your body at a certain pH. Uh, usually your blood is somewhere around 7.1, uh, 7.3 in there, between 7.1 and 7.3. And not much you can do about it. There's nine buffer systems. There's three phosphate buffer systems, three carbonate buffer systems, and three uh, protein or phosphate uh, buffer systems. And so... Um, these things uh, keep your pH in that range in your blood and the fluid in between the cells and in the cells between 7.1 and 7.3. So when your urine or your saliva goes down, uh, in other words, more acid, that's because your body's kicking the excess acid out. And that's not actually changing the pH in your body. So your body is defending you by kicking the excess acid out uh, in your, both your saliva and your urine. And so, uh, basically, um, everybody needs 90 essential nutrients. Obviously, if you were diagnosed with cancer in 2000, got treated in 2000, this is 13 years later, uh, you're a cancer survivor, and I applaud you and all the wonderful things you've done. And um, so, uh, you know, I wouldn't want you to change anything you're doing because you've been doing a good job. But um, uh, we, we've been using these products for people who have active cancer, for people who are cancer survivors, and there's just not any any problems that we can tell or anybody can tell. Clemson University can't tell. There's just nothing that you have to be concerned about. And so it comes down to um, those are your choices. You might want to try the Ultimate Classic, which is a liquid. 
Um, it's a one ounce per 100 pounds of body weight. The Beyond Tangerine is uh, one scoop twice a day per 100 pounds of body weight. And so if you weigh 125, you know you're going to be at uh, one ounce a day of the Ultimate Classic. I would do both. I'd do one ounce a day of the Ultimate Classic at breakfast and uh, two scoops of the Beyond Tan Tangerine at bedtime with all the other stuff you're supposed to take. You know, give us a call in a couple of weeks. Let us know your decision. We'll be back another day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Char. Super job. Thank you so much, Doug and Billy. Superlative job as usual. 